So in case you haven't noticed, people have started getting their hands on the new M4 Mac Minis and doing what they do with them, which is obviously test them and tear them down. And I've still been debating on whether I want to upgrade my M1 Mac Mini to the M4. I'm thinking I might, but that decision seems to be getting easier and easier because with the teardowns of these new Mac Minis, we've discovered that they actually have a modular SSD. And so today I want to talk about that. So let's dive in. Now, back when I made my first video talking about this Mac Mini, I did reply to a comment under that video like a bit of a smart ass, and I do apologize for that, but I replied like that because the comment was asking if I thought that Apple was using one NAND for their SSD like they did in the M2, or if they went back to two NANDs, and I replied like a smart ass because I did an entire video talking about why Apple doing that didn't really matter. You can check it out over there. I make fun of a bunch of YouTubers who really just kind of live in their own bubble and think that going from one NAND to two or two NANDs to one is gonna be this mind-blowingly massive difference when in reality, the general consumer isn't going to care. I make fun of them a little bit. You should check it out. But again, right over there after this video. But in reality, I didn't really care what Apple did for the base configuration, whether it was one NAND or two, because I run everything externally. But what I didn't expect was for Apple to not only go back to having two 128 gig NANDs, but also to have those NANDs on a module that you can remove from the computer. That was actually not on my bingo card for a Mac Mini, especially considering how small this new Mac Mini is. Now, I'm personally referring to this piece as a module and not as an SSD because, yes, it does have NAND chips just like an SSD, but it's missing a crucial component, which is the storage controller. When you buy an SSD from the store, it's going to have NAND chips, a storage controller, and the idea behind that is that when you plug it into the computer, all of the management of where the data goes on the SSD is handled by the controller once the computer sends the data to it. But the thing is, Apple's M series of chips share a lot more in common with something like a smartphone processor and a lot less with something like an Intel processor or an AMD processor, basically x86. And the biggest thing you'll notice with something like an x86 processor is that it is just a processor. You're gonna have it and then a separate piece for the graphics and a separate piece for the memory, Whereas with Apple's processors, they are not just processors, they are SOCs or system on chips, meaning they include the processor, the graphics, the memory, video encoders, and the storage controllers. What I personally think this means is not that Apple is giving us some sort of upgrade path where we can change the SSD out ourselves. They might give us that at some point where we can change the SSD, plug the Mac into another Mac with configurator on it, and then flash a new SSD to it. That might happen, but I don't think that's what that means. What I personally think this means is that Apple is trying to simplify their production where they can just make storage modules and then make different variations of boards that only change based on the processor and RAM configurations. Once the processor and RAM configurations are selected, those boards are out and you just slap the SSD in it, whatever option the consumer buys. That is a much easier process and does open up the door for potential future upgradability, but for right now, I don't think that's the case. Either way, I do think it's cool that Apple is finally bringing some modules back to the Mac. We saw it with the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro, and now, surprisingly, the Mac Mini. I don't think we're gonna see anything like that in something like the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. I think those are gonna stay soldered and don't hold your breath for upgradable memory. With unified memory being the way it is as basically an integral part of the SOC, it's pretty much gonna have to stay soldered. I think the only thing Apple could really do with that to improve the performance would be maybe go from LP DDR memory to DDR memory, but that's kind of splitting hairs at that point. The point is, Having a module means that at some point in the future, it is possible that Apple will allow users to plug their computers into Configurator and flash new storage onto their computers if they're willing to open the computers up. I'm not holding my breath on that yet, but Configurator is quite a powerful tool for in case you corrupt the firmware on your Mac Mini, which is something I've done, or if you want to mass deploy things and in some cases, like with the Mac Pros, the old Intel Mac Pros with the T2 chip, you could upgrade the storage and then flash those things to the actual Mac and they put it under the guise of security or whatever, I don't care. Point is, we've seen the configurator tool used to actually tie memory to a secure chip, that being the T2 chip built into the Intel Mac Pros for new SSDs, so it's not out of the realm of possibility for it to be an option with these new computers, but for me personally, all this really does is make the decision to buy an M4 Mac Mini that little bit easier because it comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM at the base now. It has a modular SSD, so that if I do decide to upgrade, I might be able to do that. 
my base M1 Mac Mini still gets a decent trade-in value and the redesign looks amazing. And my M1 Mac Mini literally just runs as a Plex server now, but when I was using it, I made a ton of videos about it and you all loved it. And you all seem to really like my content talking about this M4 Mac Mini, even though I don't even own one yet. So yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, let me know what you all think about this upgradable SSD or this, I should say, removable module because it's not an SSD and we don't know if it's upgradable. Either way, let me know what you all think about that down in the comments. What do you think about my theory about the just simplified production line? And of course, if you have some comments that you want to give me about anything regarding this, just let me know down in the comments. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and leave a like and maybe subscribe so you don't miss anything coming up in the future. And aside from that, I got a couple other fun things I'm doing, like the fact that the 20th anniversary of Halo 2 just rolled out and the dig site has launched the demo, the original E3 demo for Halo 2, at least their sort of remake of it. So I'm definitely going to be making a video about that. So again, subscribe so you don't miss that. But until then, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.